piece in this river here with Colby. Well, y'all, we have made it home from vacation. We've gotten everything unpacked. We went on our youth trip and now we're back to the grind. We're back to reality. And I want to tell y'all what we have started off doing. Chores today was moving the cows and the sheep. We also moved the dairy. I have sprinklers on everywhere because y'all, I know there's fires everywhere, but I think if one <laughs> match got lit down here in south mississippi i think all of mississippi would be on fire too it is so incredibly dry we have not had any rain so i have watered 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 there's sprinklers going everywhere our grass everywhere literally is brown crunchy and dead i wanted to show y'all and walk y'all through the steps of something that is brand new to us and i'm really excited about and this is what i'm talking about these are my american breast eggs and if you notice those distinct lines on there. So that is for a reason. I have, I know five hens, maybe six. The sixth one I know for sure is not laying yet. I was debating between if I had six roosters or seven roosters. So I'm not quite sure yet. Now this is what our plan is with the American breast. So we have way more roosters than what we need. So we're gonna be taking a couple of those to freezer camp just here in the next couple of weeks. Since we only have a few, I'm not really worried about the weather as much as, as I would if like we were doing a pig or something. So we only have a few, it won't take us very long to do those. But this is my plan with them. Since I only have a couple of hens out of the 12, because I don't know if I have five, hens or six hens one is still just a little questionable i know i have five for sure one is still a little questionable a couple of the roosters are going to go to freezer camp but i'm taking my eggs and since i'm only getting i had for the past couple of days i had been getting five a day for some reason today i only had four in there but since i'm only getting a couple at a time i will be marking those and turning those throughout the day right before I go to bed, right when I get up in the morning, until I get enough to fill an incubator. Because I only have a couple of hens, I will only be able to get a couple of eggs out at a time. Now my goal is to take these batch of eggs, hatch them out, I'm going to do the same thing with kind of the concept that I have going on now. All of my hens will be layers. The roosters, of course, will be there to fertilize my eggs. The hens that I get from this batch will pretty much be the same thing. I will keep all my hens out, grow all the roosters up, put them in the freezer, and then I am at least doubling, maybe even tripling my amount of hens. So that way, when I get ready to collect eggs, for hatching either more hens or to sell or for meat birds, whichever route I wanna go with that time, I'm getting more than four or five eggs out of time. If I can double or triple my hens, I'm getting more like 10 to 15 out at a time. And these are a purebred bird. So of course I don't want to mix them with my laying hens. So they're doing a couple of things. They are eating the bugs out of the garden, any bugs that are in the, in the leftover vegetation that we leave for them. They're eating the vegetation. They're also eating the bugs. Plus, they're re-feeding the ground. They're fertilizing the ground for us. They're giving us eggs and they're giving us meat. So this has been a wonderful, wonderful move here on our homestead. We have been really, really happy about this. So I just wanted to kind of let y'all know our next, uh, venture. We are super excited because I just started getting the eggs out a couple of weeks ago, but now I feel like that they are, they have reached their maturity, the hens and the roosters. So now I'm going to start saving my eggs. Like I said, I will be turning these eggs for the next couple of days before putting them in my incubator. And I'll be showing y'all this whole process in the next upcoming videos y'all be able to see me hatch these out raise them up and the cycle just keeps repeating it is a beautiful thing of how when we take care of them how they can take care of us is that good watermelon i've been doked in this you like putting salt on it 
Um, We're gonna keep those seeds. Those are heirloom watermelon. This is for survival seeds. Mm. They grew really well. Mm -hmm. What was our problem? Crows. Out of all things. Yep, crows got it. Which we did put them. We did plant them a little late. This was the second harvest of uh, watermelons because the first harvest got really bad burned from. I can't remember what. Yeah. They didn't produce. So we planted a second set when we did our second piece. And this is them and it had a great harvest. I wish we'd had a little bit better and it was just basically because of crows. Yep, and they're really good. And there was what, probably 20 out there mm -hmm. and we only got about five or six. Got six total. Which is very frustrating. Definitely. But they are really good. And we, like we eat them one. So like the one, two, three, four, yeah, the four left. Four left. Yep. You I'm like Eliza? Okay. It tastes okay. Oh, Say, like you love watermelon. Mm -hmm. well, we know Livy likes it because she's got it in her hair and she said more. I'm about to get some more. Daddy. Yeah, oh. So, survival seeds, if y'all are not familiar with them, I have a link that will be in the description where you guys can go check them out. The coolest thing I will say about survival seeds is this. On the back of every packet, they tell you exactly what you can do to keep your seeds. And I think that is awesome. One of the fun things on the farm is when you hit them hiccups, you know what I mean? So we had a hiccup yesterday. I told y'all that we got home, got back to reality. We moved the sheep and the cows around to where they were supposed to be, but we hit a hiccup because our little Jersey bull, <clears throat> who is not really breeding age yet, but he is almost breeding age. We didn't want him to stay with our Herefords. Just in case one of them were not bred, we didn't want him to rebreed them, being that he's a Jersey bull. We wanted, we want them to be back rebred with her Herford bull. So we moved him up with the dairy because we didn't think that was gonna be a problem. Well, he started nursing off of our Jersey mama last night and <laughs> Colby went out to milk this morning and we didn't have any milk. So we're fixing to go try to weed him out and move him back with the herd. And we're just gonna cross our fingers that those mamas are already bred um, by Sunny and, and that we won't have to worry about crossbreeding between the Jersey bull and the Hereford mamas. Harley's going to open the gate down there where he's going and we are going to try to call him up out of this field and weed him out which is probably going to be real fun. Okay so we have a plan. We're going to see if it actually works. Aiden's just going to call him up. We're going to dump the mama some feed. We're going to work on pushing him out of this gate and then we'll walk behind him down the gate down there where Harley already is. We start heading that way. She'll open that gate. And he usually is pretty laid back. Even though he is a Jersey bull, he's still real young. We've never had any problems with um, temperamental bulls, thankfully. Um, so if we can get him out here, we're gonna walk him down there and put him in that pasture down there so that he doesn't suck all of our milk again today and tonight because we had no milk this morning. And we're gonna have to fix that. Well, that was actually way easier than I anticipated, which I was hoping that it went pretty easy because he is kind of laid backish. I mean, he, he's not really rambunctious or real headstrong. He doesn't try to uh, just get crazy. So it was a whole lot easier. So he's now back with these mamas right here. And we're just gonna hope that they are all rebred because we he is small, yes but we have had them breed not too much longer after that age where we were thinking there's no way he's actually old enough and he was this was up on colby's uh -huh. daddy's land all his hereford mamas were dropping black calves from a little bull that we were like there's no way he's old enough to breed he was breeding them all so that just goes to show you that sometimes some just mature a little bit 
different and we definitely don't want this Jersey bull breeding our Hereford mama. So that's the reason why we have moved him out. But now that he's drinking all of our mama's milk down there, you're like, you know what? He can't stay here either. So we're just gonna pray that these mamas are bred and we won't have a problem with that. Sonny, which was down there, we are crossbreeding them because he just is not old enough yet. And uh, his mama is actually down there too. And she's not gonna be here much longer for that reason. We are fixing to sell Dixie and get a replacement for her. So that we'll have, and probably another one, I think we're looking to get back up maybe to three Jersey cows. I don't know, we'll see. But I know for sure one more, he will be able to breed both of those mamas back. Uh, and we'll have a Jersey bull for our Jersey mamas and it won't matter because he won't be related to any one of those and he just come with her so it's really almost like we got the free bull he said you can either take him or leave him but this is what she is regardless so we took him for that reason our plans are now to sell her like i said get another replacement and then he'll be able to breed both of them not this delivery but next delivery once they're ready to be rebred back that'll be his job and then that way we'll be getting into those pure jersey lines again the ones that we have get older we will want to raise up their calves which will be pure but we want to raise up their calves to be our next milk and mamas so we will definitely need obviously a jersey bull to rebreed those back with and that's done the shore's done it was a whole lot easier than i expected and i just have to show y'all this my kids have asked me almost every day y'all see all the leaves on the ground my kids uh, the leaves all in the pool they're like mama are you sure it's not fall i'm like it's not fall we're still in august we're august that's still considered summer here in mississippi but what is so crazy is because we have been without rain for so long the grass is dying obviously y'all just saw a brown grass our trees are dying there's i'm looking at a tree right now that's literally solid brown all of the leaves are falling off because the the, the tree leaves are starting to die back we typically don't start seeing this kind of leaf foliage and and dying back off until more around uh later september sometimes the first of october so this is very unusual for us in august to okay let me show y'all the pool there's just leaves absolutely everywhere so the kids are like are you sure you're not tricking us mama are you sure it's not falling I'm like y'all it's not falling the the leaves are just dying back because we're we're really in a drought which is what i'm coming to do now because we have had no rain i have had to keep sprinklers on on all of my pet my places back here my kitchen beds and stuff because i do have annual herbs that are planted all back here and if i let them go in this kind of i actually had huckleberries started back here in my food forest which i've talked to y'all a little bit about I also did lots of elderberry back there and i am getting sprinkled on all even all back there even some of my blueberry bushes that i transplanted early early this spring some of the leaves are starting to turn brown it has been unbelievably harsh with no rain every day i'm turning the water on here moving this sprinkler there turning the water on over there by my high tunnel and then moving it on the other side because it is just literally so dry we have to water with sprinklers here daily because if we don't we're going to lose everything We have a little bit of a mystery on our hand. I come out this afternoon to do some outside chores. My American breasts, I got five of eggs out today, which are gonna be marked and turned for a couple more days. So we're gonna get those in the incubator. I've already shown y'all that. Also had a couple of the pigs. Waters needed to be filled up. I'm sweating, but we had a couple of chores that needed to be done. Now I got out to the chicken coop, and this is what I wanted to show y'all so i come out here and this was open just a little bit and this hair was caught up in there before i pulled it out there's a little bit more hair here 
it's not Romeo or Juliet. It kind of reminds me of Hattie Mae's, but, and see, it got caught here. So whatever was going in and out, fur got caught on this and left behind like traces of whatever it is. It does remind me of Hattie Mae. However, to be completely honest with you, I honestly think Hattie Mae is way too big to push into this because it's latched here and it's latched up here but she would have to really rake on this and as big as she is to be able to fit through this this would have to move and this is not moved so that kind of leaves me wondering what got in there but then this is my really big question is that whatever got in there there's feathers all behind me i'm about to show you all those feathers and hattie may does not mess with my birds she never has so whatever got in there got at least two chickens because there's a set of black feathers and a set of light feathers. You see feathers all over here. Like obviously there was some type of struggle and there's feathers all over here, all back in here. There's feathers everywhere. So in my opinion, I think something got its meal to go. I might have to come back out here and set cameras up again. Whatever got in took its meal and it looks like it went this way. I would almost be fooled to think that Hattie Mae went in there because it does look like her fur. It's a little bit browner than her fur though. Hers is more of a pure white. Y'all have seen her. She's a great Pyrenees. This is almost like more of a a tan color which makes me want to think of a coyote and it would have to be super slender as well to fit in without pushing this gate here so it would have to be something slender to be able to get through here without pushing the fence back which like i said hattie may obviously can't do but i could have been very easily fooled to think that it was her that went in there even though this is pretty tan and whatever it was obvious and there's some feathers in there so i guess it just got the weakest link and took it with them but it, it had to have at least come back whether it took two at a time it kind of reminds me of a coyote with the color of its fur but it definitely took its meal to go so guys i definitely have a mystery on my hand whatever it is now knows where its food source is which is a problem so I'm gonna definitely make sure that we have the door super secure. We've never had a problem ever with our coop. And we've gotta first figure out what it is and what time it's coming in really before we can do anything about it. So y'all stay tuned for the next video because that's probably gonna be what's coming out next. Figuring out what has come to our chicken coop. We will let you guys know whenever we find out. But until then, happy homesteading y'all.